Well, hello again. This is Jonathan Wright. What are we talking about here? Are the pro and anti carcinogenic metabolites of estrogen. And hang in there, guys. I'm going to do another one on the pro and anti carcinogenic metabolites of testosterone, too. There are certain forms of estrogen that can promote cancer. I didn't say they cause it necessarily, that they can promote its growth. And there are others that can retard its growth. This applies in women who are having the menstrual periods and their own bodies are making their own hormones, or it's equally applicable in women who are taking bioidentical hormone replacement. Why? Because of course we always want a balance away from cancer, don't we? We want more of the anti-carcinogenic metabolites than we do of the pro-carcinogenic ones. All right, well, the first one of these was described by Dr. Henry Lemon back in the 1960s. What he found is that estriol, which is one of many estrogen metabolites, appeared to be anti-carcinogenic. And women who had had breast cancer surgery, at that time they had better sense than to radiate the heck out of people or give them chemotherapy. Um, if they had better levels of estriol, they survived a lot longer after surgery. And if they had lower levels of estriol, why, they didn't survive for as long. All right, that was one of Dr. Lemon's initial findings. Since then, it's been confirmed in many, many researches that estrogen in the form of estriol uh, contacts only the anti-carcinogenic estrogen receptor. It happens to be called estrogen receptor beta. Now, there's an estrogen receptor alpha, and that one can promote more of the growth of cancer, but the beta receptor, it works against cancer. And estriol is the only estrogenic metabolite that exclusively contacts estrogen receptor beta, which works against cancers. So, whether one is pre-menopausal or post-menopausal, it's not a bad idea to have an evaluation to see if you have sufficient estriol. And that's just one of three different measurements that can be done for both pre- and post-menopausal women. Now, with post-menopausal women, it's a little easier because this prescription for hormones can be set up to go in an anti-carcinogenic way. For pre-menopausal women, well, we hope their bodies are set to make things go in more of an anti-carcinogenic way. But if a test finds they're not, it's easy enough to correct. How do we correct if there's not enough estriol? Very simple. Iodine and iodide. Both forms of iodine will help a younger woman's body make more estriol than it was making before. Now, with postmenopausal women, the majority of the estrogen replacement is usually estriol, so that's taken care of. But particularly if one is premenopausal, iodine and iodide, where do we get those? Well, let's see. Seafood and seaweed, if you happen to like the type of sushi that has seaweed wrapped around it, sashimi. Or one can go to the natural food store and get kelpie capsules. Or one can get capsules that are titled by one company, Iodorol, and another company, Ithroid. I don't make these names up. And use one a day. And the estriol level comes up. If it's low, that is. All right, now that's one anti-carcinogenic estrogen metabolite. Another is actually a ratio between two estrogens. One of them, technically speaking, is called 2-hydroxyestrogen. The other one is called 16-alpha-hydroxyestrogen. And the 2-hydroxyestrogen is more anti-carcinogenic, and the 16 is more pro-carcinogenic. So we want more 2s than 16s. Again, that is measurable in both pre- and post-menopausal women. Usually comes out okay with postmenopausal women, again, because of the nature of the prescription if they're using hormone replacement. But for premenopausal women, how can we make sure we have a favorable ratio between the 2 and the 16 estrogen? That's pretty easy. Broccoli, cauliflower, cabbage, Brussels sprouts. Look online under cruciferous vegetables. 
C-R-U-C-I-F-E-R-O-N-O-U-S. Cruciferous vegetables, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, anything that's a cruciferous vegetable tilts that ratio away from cancer. Isn't that nice? Now, it is possible to tilt it too far away, too. The ratio shouldn't be too low or too high. But there has been research out there showing that eating those vegetables lowers the risk of breast cancer. Yes! And how it does it is by favorably altering. So we have more of the 2-hydroxyestrogen, which is anti-carcinogenic, and less of the 16, which is pro-carcinogenic. All right, so far we have estriol. Oh, by the way, can't we get that measured in a blood test, the estriol? Darn, no we can't. A researcher back in the 1970s got women to volunteer to be given radioactive estriol. Oh my goodness, they were kind of brave. So we gave injections of that and measured how long it lasted in the bloodstream. It was anywhere from a few minutes to a little over an hour. It just didn't last in the bloodstream. So the best way of measuring the estriol and the only way to get it accurate is in the urine collection, which is, of course, quite recommended by me anyway for checking estrogens because it checks a lot more than anything else at a better price. Okay, back to the 216 ratio. Remember, we want more 2s and less 16s. That can be measured in blood, but it also can be measured in the same urine collection. And again, it's at a better price. All right, what's the last one? It's one that we don't see measured in blood, but only in urine so far. It's got this gosh awful long name. It's called 2-methoxyestradiol. 2-methoxyestradiol. And 2-methoxyestradiol is so potent an anti-carcinogen that some researchers have called it a profound anti-carcinogenic. But it doesn't happen to contact any estrogen receptors. Now what's an estrogen doing that doesn't contact estrogen receptors? It works over there somewhere in something called the tubulin system. Well, that's just the way nature does it. It doesn't contact estrogen receptors. So even women who have breast cancer not only can use it, but should use it because it's been found to be active against breast cancer, to be active against prostate cancer. Yes, and I'm talking about women's hormones here. Those guys have some of, them, some of this too, a little bit. It's active against osteosarcoma. It's also active against a whole variety of cancers. This 2-methoxyestradiol. Now, once again, it can be put into a prescription for someone who's postmenopausal. But what about a younger woman? How does she make sure her levels of 2-methoxyestradiol are higher? So reducing stress is a really good way. And any way we can think of. Relaxation, meditation, whatever it takes to reduce stress. However, there's one other thing that's needed. And again, remember 2-methoxyestradiol? They're called methyl groups. that are hung on estradiol. Where are they found? Beets. It's got more of these in it. But mostly it's supplements. Um, there's something called trimethylglycine. That helps. Then there's methylfolate and methylcobalamin, which are the methylated, more active forms of B12 and folate. So just about anything that has these things called methyl groups, methylcobalamin, methylfolate. What's in beets is called betaine. It's also called trimethylglycine. Ask at your health food store, they'll tell you where the methyl donor supplements are. Should everyone have these measured? Well, given the risk of breast cancer these days, yeah, everyone certainly should consider if, of course, female, and particularly premenopausal, to make sure your body is on track to reduce risk of cancer even further. And that's that. Thank you very much.